I'm J.K. Dobbins, running back at Ohio State. I was born in Houston, Texas, then I moved to LaGrange. LaGrange pretty much made me who I am today. LaGrange, Texas is located about 70 miles east of Austin, about 90 miles west of Houston. We say we're about an hour from anywhere. You get into those rolling hills with the Colorado River running right through town, classic bridge that we have that's a staple of the landscape here, not to mention the courthouse. It's one of those places that you think of small town Texas. I'm from LaGrange, Texas. I've been there all my life. Football is everything to LaGrange. I mean, everyone is waiting for a Friday night. LaGrange football started in 1960. Unbelievable tradition, won two state championships, 1975 and 2000. We got a stadium of about 3,500, and the home side's about 2,500. We only give the visitors about 1,000. Out of the 2,500, we got right at 1,200 reserve seats that have been with families for 70 years. The Dobbins name in LaGrange holds a lot of respect. J.K.'s father, Lawrence Dobbins, was one of the best football players that came through LaGrange, Texas. Everybody talked about the dynamics of Lawrence Dobbins. Small, 5'7", five, 5'8", five, he never got above, I think, 165 pounds, but could fly. In 1997, Sealy was going for their fourth straight state championship. There was a lot of hype going into that 97 semifinal game. Lawrence's senior year. His two long runs put him up going into the fourth quarter, but Seeley made a couple big plays in the fourth quarter to beat him, but Lawrence Dobbins left a lasting impression. He was pretty awesome. My sophomore year, we became boyfriend and girlfriend. And then 1998, I was 18, Lawrence was 18. I knew I was five months pregnant because I actually went to see if I can get rid of the baby. And they told me I was five months. Sometimes I tell JK he's a miracle baby because I was 18 and possibly thought about doing away with that. It took a lot of thinking to keep the child or not. So that's what I always tell him. He's a miracle baby. He's like, you know, my shining star. I usually come back to LaGrange. As much time as we get off, um, I try to make it back at least one time throughout that break. I definitely think about like, dang, this is where I'm from. When I had JK, his dad, Lawrence was not around. He had already went off to college in Pennsylvania. He ended up coming back to Texas. He walked onto the football team at Bland College. You're used to being a football star. Now you have to wait your turn, or you have to beat someone out for your spot. He felt like he shouldn't have to do that. He felt like he was better than them, so he quit. Because he loved football so much, and he, I think, missed his opportunity, it kind of ruined him. It turned him into a, a different person. He did not finish college. Whenever he got a job, it's like that job was not good enough, so he might quit it. I'm just like, dude, you have a kid, any job is good enough. This place is called North Point. The last place me and my mom and my dad lived together. This is pretty much where I lived for my childhood. JK saw lots of things that no child should have to see. Emotional abuse, physical abuse. Cops. Sometimes I see my mom crying. Sometimes uh, I see my dad crying. So it was my decision like, to just leave the relationship. My dad's health was amazing until he started hanging out with some of the wrong people. You put some of the wrong stuff in your body, it can mess up your health, and that's where my dad messed up. Putting the wrong thing in your body and also being caught with that, you go to, you go to prison, you go to jail. I love my dad with all my heart. He was like my best friend whenever he was doing well in life, not incarcerated. He wanted me to do great. I was his pride and joy. Him telling me that you don't want this type of life, that was a big motivator to me as well. His health started to decline and 
you know, the last time I got to see him was in a prison cell, and he passed in prison. It was hard. It was the hardest thing ever. He passed away in jail from a stroke. All the things that happened to Lawrence, I kind of really tried to make sure didn't happen to JK, to make sure that he stays on the right path. Maya was at the forefront of all his support. He's the person he is today because of her. Through his sophomore year, he had about 2,300 yards, over 30 rushing touchdowns. Following his sophomore year is when, you know, TCU came on and offered, and then it just kind of started snowballing from there. The hype going into his senior year was awesome. Over 5,000 yards, 70 touchdowns coming in, every offer you could ever want, you know, coming in, already committed to Ohio State. Oh, yeah, I'm about to have a, a, big, a big senior year, maybe take my team to state, new stadium. Hopes are high for me. First play of the senior year, 2016, and we run a little power read. Hand it off to JK on the stretch, and he gets around the edge for about 13 yards, about to go out of bounds, and uh, break my ankle. I tear a lot of ligaments in my ankle, and then I fracture my fibula, and I'm done for a season. Every time I come back to Texas, I have to go and visit my dad at the grave. It's still kind of crazy that he's gone. And I just kneel for a second and just take a moment to like look at his grave and think about my dad. Usually I say a prayer. I just think about how I want to do these things for my dad. It's a motivator for me. Up. He's up, Jay. He's up. He's up. When J.K. decided he wanted to go to Ohio State, I said, okay, J.K., you should not be expecting to play your freshman year. He told me, Mom, I'm going to Ohio State to compete and win a spot. I get to college, and like I had a crazy amount of fire in me. I had a lot of motivation. I don't want to sit out another season. Like I came here to play. Dobbins, who missed his senior year with an injury, probably going to get the chance to start and play early. I show up at this game and my son is starting. No one told me <laughs> that J.K. was going to start. There's the quickness in the moves of the freshman. J.K. Dobbins gets to the outside, to the 15 and inside the 10. Wow. I felt amazing, but actually I cried like a baby. <laughs> that was a lot for her because not only did I make it through when my dad couldn't break through, but like, we've been through so much together, like so much together. Whenever I play, I just want to make sure my mom is happy and I want to go off for my mom, you know? Straight ahead to the 30, gets to his own 40. Dobbins hits the 50 yard line. Right side to the Wisconsin 30. Dobbins to the 20 on the right sideline. Dobbins to the 10. The sidelines will come together as Ohio State will win a Big Ten championship tonight in Indianapolis. Before we even took the last kneel, I'm crying because it's like, I wish my dad was here to see this. I'm crying and then Coach Ivor comes up to me, he's the first person I see. And he gives me a big hug and I start crying even harder. It's like, damn, I wish my dad was here to hug me. But I know my mom's here. And so I see when my mom went, immediately went to find my mom after everything. Sensational freshman running back, J.K. Dobbins, as her Big Ten championship game MVP. It's still rough. I mean, I still think about how you're going, but it's in a good way. It drives me. We have the saying, if he was alive, is go get it and come back with it. It's something for me to regroup with. Sometimes, you know, you get caught up in the world, and it's like, all right, I'm back. I'm back to myself. I just, now I'm ready. Before I leave, I say the saying that we say it together. Go get in, come back with it. Take a deep breath, and it's like, okay, let's go. Go get in, come back with it. <laughs>